Hey, coffee nerds. So, here we are in Mexico. Been here three days now, getting to know the city a little bit, getting to know the culture. It's my first time in Mexico, but luckily knowing a little bit of the language and um, having some contacts here, it's been a good few days. From what I've gathered so far, the main growing region is in Chiapas, which is in the south of Mexico. But that doesn't mean that there's not more really great growing regions. I've actually tried some coffee so far from Nayarit, uh, Puebla, and I know there's coffee being grown in Veracruz as well. So I've been making some contacts, some in the south and some in some of these other places scattered around sort of southern Mexico. But seeing as we're here in the beautiful Mexico City, I thought it would be great to start with some of the local coffee culture. People who are working in the specialty industry to elevate the quality of coffee here and roasters who are on their way to making it in other parts of the world as well. So I'm really excited. I should also mention that I've been staying the last few nights in a theater called Teatro Lucido. Um, amazing clay cups which maybe it's just me but I think it makes the coffee better Say hi to Abraham. So next up, I popped down to Blind Station to meet up with Alejandro, and he told me his whole story. He's had the idea for Blind Station for about five years. It just so happens that when I popped by, they were celebrating their one year anniversary. He decided to install a mod bar so to have more transparency between the client and the barista and do a lot of experimentation with different coffee recipes. So he actually made me a coffee called Atole Cafe, which is actually a blend of corn powder, I guess, piloncillo, which is the sugar, and also cold brew. That was a really unique drink, very thick. But his dream is to show to the world that Mexico can make really good coffee um, and also helping the people here in Mexico to be able to live on their crops, to be able to live well so that every year the coffees get better and farmers can be paid more. So they're doing a lot to, to just better the, the coffee community in Mexico. So I've been walking around this neighborhood in Mexico City, I think it's called Juarez, trying to find this cafe called Buna Cafe. And from Google Maps, to, well, I guess I only searched on Google Maps, but it pointed me to two different directions, then I searched the address, and it still didn't come up, so I had to search the Instagram, and then the address was on their Instagram, and hopefully, now I'm at the right place. Let's see. And I think I figured out the reason why it was so difficult, because look. It is in fact not called Buna Cafe anymore. I did actually find Buna Cafe and um, they just happened to be sharing this space with this other restaurant. But we're gonna try some cocoa nibs and we're gonna make some cafe de olla. Con mis amigos Ivan y Susana. <laughs> Oli! So I chatted with Ivan 
and he explained to me how they try to do as much as they can in-house from their coffee obviously all the way to their infusions, um, horchata, even cacao. But he also explained to me another situation in Mexico, but it's really relevant in any coffee producing country, about growing connections between the roasters, uh, the buyers, and the actual producers, and how even though they might not be producing the same exact quality every year, that working with the same farms actually encourages them to do better each year, um, and develops stronger connections. And so that really inspired me. So the uh, Café de Olla we just made had piloncillo, canela, piloncillo is the sugar, canela is cinnamon, and like a little bit of piel de naranja, orange peel, and, um, and a coffee from, actually it was like a blend of Oaxaca and uh, Veracruz. It's so nice together. I finally made my way down to Coyoacan, which is the neighborhood a little bit further south in Mexico City. And I found myself at Avellaneda, which is a cafe, a small cafe down there. And they were using coffee from a local producer, actually in Oaxaca, um, named Enrique Lopez, who I would actually meet later on when I made it to Oaxaca and tried some different processes by him. And then finally made my way up to another cafe called Alma Negra. This location was even smaller than Avellaneda, but I had a nice chat with Dylan, the, the barista, who was also a photographer, turned to coffee, and he explained to me they were also using coffee from Enrique. So I tried an espresso from Enrique's purple honey process, which he had been experimenting with at his farm called Chelin. del fuego, um, cucurucho. ¿Qué significa cucurucho? Un kilo de especias. Oh, okay. Um, cucurucho, which is uh, apparently like a folded up piece of fabric or paper to carry things. Also resembles a V60 paper, so that's why they named it like that. What we're drinking here is uh, a geisha with a black honey process. Seven hours later, I wake up to the sounds of Central, por favor, aquí, por favor, déjame aquí, Central. We had to like make the bus driver drop us off where we're supposed to drop off. I need a coffee. <laughs> 